Hello, I'm Jack Crook, and I'm the writer and creator of Channel 4's comedy, Big Boys. Hi, I'm Dylan Llewellyn, and I play Jack in the show. And I'm John Pointing, and I play Jack's best friend, Danny, in the show. And, well, the fans want to know the guffs behind some of the iconic scenes from Big Boys, so let's go. I've realised that over the past few months, I don't really like Corinne. It's fine. The coming out scene. And yes. I don't like many people it's like Corinne. Oh, you're not a racist, are you? No, I... I like boys. I like, like, men. And I ain't said anything... ..cos... ..I'm worried I let down Dad. I don't want to let down Dad. And I don't want to let down you. You're so good. Frank, man. Aren't you wonderful? Uh, How do you find watching it, Jet? I, I, what I really like about this scene is that, that every single line of the whole coming out scene, because it's such a trope to have like a, any sort of comedy that's got a kind of gay theme, always has a coming out scene. I really wanted the coming out scene here to always be linked back to his dad and always be linked back to grief. So I wrote it so that every single line really is actually less about him feeling shame about his sexuality, like he doesn't feel any. It's just always him like not being able to tell someone, not being able to tell that person who's gone something about himself and the, and the grief attached to that. And I thought you acted it beautifully. Thank you. And also it does help that it's got like 16 million views on TikTok. Yeah. And was wow. on Celebrity Google Box. Celebrity Google, what's the yeah. Pride the special app? Yeah. Camille's amazing in this, like just not revealing anything, just like the blank. Yeah. Because it just hits Jack. Hey, is your mum for your oasis? <laughs> no. <laughs> I told her and she left. Fuck. Hi. Do you remember these, year three at school? You'd have to decorate and fill up an old shoebox for the poor Romanian kids. Bung in warm gloves, a tube of Aquafresh, and an S Club 7 CD from Walworths. Yeah. Well, we never gave this one away. Because you were about six, and you point blank refused to drop it in because you said you wanted to keep one for yourself. Jack. Keeping the orphans from Rachel Stevens. That's selfish. Anyway, do you remember Saturday nights as a kid, you watched The X Factor, and then straight after on ITV2, there'd be The Extra Factor. Yeah? Yeah. Well, at the very beginning, all the X Factor judges, they'd write down their predictions about who they thought would win. So this is something that every year, when me and my mum used to watch The X Factor, we would also write down our predictions of who we thought would win. And I remember, I can remember coming up with this idea that, like, the dad had left something behind for, for Jack to open on his 21st birthday because I would often get, like, friends of my dad's like sending me stuff on certain days, like like one of my dad's friends who's also a black cab driver sent me loads of photos of my dad on my like 21st or sent me loads of bits mm. when like I'd done loads of stuff up in Edinburgh and got great reviews. He was like, your dad would be really proud. And I thought there's something so nice about giving little tokens of someone when they're gone that kind of remind you sort of that, that, that they were there. And also I did always want to keep a, a girly pink shoebox. Did you ever have to make shoeboxes for like, Kids who were sort of involved in war, like we were always making yeah, a victims of war. We should say, <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, yeah. I wrote, "It'll be a solicitor living in a new build by the high street." What did Dad put? It will probably be a dancer, and maybe with a boyfriend up in London. Yeah, he'd always said to me, "Your dad," he said, "He could be gay, you know." Me and Jim, the director of Big Boys, our f one of our favourite moments when we were editing it is the bit where you say, he's probably going to live up in London, probably be a dancer with a boyfriend, and then your eyes, and there's this like really beautiful bit where your eyes look up and then you look at Jack, and Jack, Jack looks from you to Peggy, and then Peggy looks to... And it's like a really... Mm. like You can track it all in like a real moment. Like that feels... Yeah, yeah, that feels so, like, seismic, because it's just eyes. Mm. Um, it's because you're all very good actors. I think we were all in it, weren't we? It was all... Yeah. It was quite an yeah. emotional scene to film, really. Yeah, there's not... There probably isn't many sort of, like, 
funny, wacky stories about this one because obviously it's one of those where everyone treats the situation very respectfully. Yeah. So everyone kind of is like aware that there's a uh, what the job is. Yeah. Definitely. So um. Yeah. I think I did fart actually just this weird. Fart. <laughs> <laughs> Which was hilarious. Yeah, I burped. <laughs> <laughs> and you pissed yourself. Is that right? <laughs> I promise you, Jack. He may not be here to say it, but me and your dad, we don't care. But you've always said, always. Now he's gone, you can't wait to have grandkids. All I ever wanted was you and for you to be happy. You know, whether you've got kids, an husband, or just a fish called Alison. As long as you're happy and healthy and not a nonce, that's what matters. I'm getting the word yeah. nonce. <laughs> <laughs> I really that yeah. sort of face of like all warm and love yeah, after yeah. saying. And as long as you're not a nonce. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> mum. I think what's really great about this scene, and it's a testament, Dylan, to, to, to you in particular, is that in episode six, the episode sort of had, at the beginning, end of the first half, this scene with the narrator and Danny and the reveal of the narrator, and that's such a big device that that very much could have just been, like, the biggest scene of the episode. Don't go there. Because you can't leave us, mate. Mate, I don't want to leave you. I want to leave me. And I think actually that scene and the coming out scene both to me held really equal weight and were both in two different parts of the same ep. And it's really testament to both of you being good actors that you could have both be given scenes like that that are kind of written kind of on purpose to be like, oh, it's a moment type thing. Mm, yeah. and, and for both of them to exist in the same ep and, and both be so talked about. Like, I think this episode is why Big Boys has sort of done so well because I think it really got to the truth of a lot of people's experiences with mental health and with coming out and grief. So it sort of feels like every now and again you do a scene and there's like a moment or a bit in it where you feel like this is the show and you feel like you really key into like what the show is at yeah. like the heart of it, I suppose. Yeah. Um, Definitely, I think it really hits home and I just love how we all got to really take our time on it and um, yeah, do it so sort of sensitively and. Um, yeah, just hearing people's responses from this scene, mm. like um, LGBTQ people, they they how much it meant to them. It's it's really nice for for people to recognise this and have the comfortability to to come out themselves and be who they want to be. I think Big Boys is just it's a great great crew and a lovely safe space to to tell these stories, mm. these subjects. Yeah.